So. Is this thing on? I told you I was gonna restore it. Those of you out there that did not believe me. Anyway, we're back on the channel here with another car video. Funny that I ran into someone this summer that watches the channel, which is crazy. I actually met somebody that's a fan of my channel. And they said, man, I love following you for the car stuff, but I can't get in all that monster shit. <laughs> and I said, I get it, but the monster shit is very important. So it's here to stay. But now, back to another Trans Am video. Um, first I'll show you a picture of what this looked like two days ago. Maybe some video footage, okay. Here you'll see uh, the car right before Joe and I brought it over here to his place. And uh, now, as you can clearly see, we are taking it down, taking it apart, and getting it ready for a awesome repaint slash restoration um, and a lot of people throw around the word restoration mighty loosely um, let me be very clear when I say the word restoration I'm very very familiar with what it means <laughs> and what the process is you guys know about my CUDA I don't I mean that's a build it's not really restored but it is concourse quality. But I did do a concourse gold restoration on another CUDA, a 1970 AAR 346 barrel four speed, numbers matching a car with an amazing story behind it. Did the restoration along with the help of the finer details in Danville, Indiana. The car went on to become a show winner across the country, undefeated, best of show, first place best of show, nothing less. Um, it was a muscle car of the year finalist. I won world's ultimate Mopar in Las Vegas, like I won it all. And uh, the car went to McCacken where it scored like 997 points out of a thousand possible. So when I talk about restoration, those of you that are gonna run and comment like, I don't know what I'm talking about. I do. So, back to this thing, though. This is not a six-barrel Cuda or a six-pack Dodge. It's not a Hemi car. It's a Trans Am, okay? It's not. A, it's a 76 Trans Am. It's not an anniversary car. It's not a gold package T-top, you know, 50th, 50th anniversary of Pontiac car which would be great. I love those, but I really love this car as well. This is still on the rare side when it comes to Trans Ams. Um, it's a 76 455 four-speed car. Factory, four-speed, 455. All 455s are manual transmissions. Okay, it's a real black car. It should be a honeycomb wheel car. Should be a gold bird. There's a big, dumb silver bird on it that I hate. So somewhere a long time ago, back where it originally, well, it, actually it's a Canadian export car. If those of you remember that from my old videos, it's a Canada, Canada built car and then ended up in South Dakota and then ended up in Northwest Indiana. And that's how I got my hands on this car. Um, this car came from my neighbor and, uh, she said, you know, I got this old Pontiac I have to get rid of and it's sitting in this warehouse and it needs all this work. And for, for like eight months, I kept thinking there was this old Firebird in a barn or in a building in primer, flat tires, you know. I finally said, let me go look at this car. And I go in there and this door opens and I see the big bird on the hood and I see 455 on the shaker bubble. And uh, I'm like, oh my God, this is awesome. It's a black Trans Am. And I walk by and I see 
a four speed. I go, it keeps getting better by the minute. Like, holy shit. And I instantly fell in love with the car. And I told her, please, please give me first shot of this car. And uh, she did, and I ended up purchasing it from her probably a couple months later. And uh, I explained to her, I said, this is a great car. And the more I looked at it, the car is rock solid. I mean, this thing is extremely rust free so far. And I say so far because you never know what is under a paint job. You can have, <laughs> you can have this great looking paint, but the Michelangelo of Bondo masters out there could have made the car look insanely gorgeous. And then you take the paint off and you're going to just start throwing up with the amount of Bondo you're going to be chipping off on the floor. Hopefully this is not the case with this car because this thing is super, super clean. The cowl, the floors. Let's take a look at the floors in here. All right, so let's turn the light on. I just pulled, just pulled the carpet out here today and all that old insulation, that real thick factory insulation, which I was trying to save, um, but it's, it's just so messed up. I mean, some of it's good, but a lot of it's not. I may save a couple of pieces of it, but I may, I don't know if I should dynamite it, whatever, but look at these floor pans. I mean, this is awesome. Up there, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna show you that up close. Don't think that's a hole, it's not. Um, but everything here is beautiful factory metal. All right, let's get inside here. So, all right, we're gonna just we're inside here. Look, we got the dash out. See all that factory red primer? That's so cool. I love seeing factory, you know, finishes on cars when you start digging around, pulling pulling stuff out like this and seeing what's underneath from the old, the old factory. Um, so I pulled the insulation off this passenger side floor and there's like this gooey stuff that was kinda, I think the when Joe took the heater box out, water spilled out so it was kinda wet here, you know? But there's gooey um, stuff. I started scraping it away and look at that beautiful primered sheet metal underneath so there's no hole there's no rotted hole here. There's a little bit of surface crap there very easy to mess with that very easy to to repair same with this back section here there's a little bit of surface rust that is solid solid sheet metal um, so i couldn't ask for a better foundation so far with this car uh, this one i have not peeled off <laughs> here i'm gonna peel this last one off there'll be a giant hole that'd be so funny you guys just laugh like hey you spoke too soon okay see this is just flaking apart you, you, you know there's no point saving this shit. it's it's nasty and they make replacement stuff which is not as good as factory but but you can Dynamat, all that. So here, it's very similar to the other side. There we go. You see that big, th that big body sealer, that thick factory seal sealer. This is just surface rust. Yep, it's all solid. So, not bad. You know, I go in these Trans Am groups, and I see guys battling serious serious uh sheet metal issues and they are welding their cars back together so i'm very lucky look at that roof that's the old factory red primer up there so now you can see at least this is all very very good stuff from the cowl to the inside of the car now let's go to the back of the car these are like, this is all beautiful wheel lips, you know? I'm guessing we're gonna find something, you know? There's, there's no way there's not gonna be a patch somewhere, you know, but this is all, this all feels like factory wheel lips. I had the, uh, I had the fuel tank out of this car two years ago, and all you see underneath here is red primer, beautiful sheet metal. Same with the floor pans, all through the, underside of the car 
you can see the red the red factory sealer or primer everywhere of course it's dirty and there's grease and oil and shit everywhere but it is super clean as far as rust issues here's one place where these cars instantly start rusting is this back section here i've been told this is where firebirds really just start to go behind the rear bumper and as you can see that is as solid as you can get so good 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 stuff when i first looked at the car originally i thought i thought there was like fiberglass patches in here i'm like ah this looks like shit this has been fiberglassed no this is like this black gooey z-bart shit they sprayed it up in the quarters and it was on the tail lights inside here it's on the marker lenses on the back it's all this black shit they like z-barted this car um probably because it was up in canada canada gets some snow i heard so they probably winterized this car many many years ago when it was brand new so now you know what we're kind of dealing with here as far as uh what i'm starting with joe and i someone put a, a stupid antenna on the back quarter so joe has to weld that up that's what started this i go we gotta weld that up anyway we might as well restore the whole car i got a new back glass already for it that's full of old old school 80s tint stuck all over it. it's just nasty i got a brand new one already um back to the thing with the engine some of you re may remember it's not the numbers matching engine but it's the numbers matching transmission in this car this happens to be i have to decode it again i just wrote the, i just got pictures of all the numbers again but i think this is a 73 trans am 455 for an automatic car so 73 trans am 455 motor for an automatic car and it's got the 4x 455 heads on it which are the better of the they're better than the old 400 4x heads um this had more horsepower than the 400 in 73 this motor i'm saying not the car um i have a friend who really wants to buy this engine and trans not the transmission but i have a friend who really wants to buy this engine so it was crazy I told my neighbor, I said, I'm gonna treat this car right. Like I said, please sell me the car. She knows I'm a serious car guy. I've got other cars. She's seen the restorations I did. Um, and I said, I will, if anybody's gonna buy this car and do the right thing to it, it's me. And I said, it would be really, so I got the car home. This is going back like two years ago. And I said, man, it'd be cool to find the correct 455 for Once I discovered it was a 73 motor, I go, I wonder if I can find a 76. Not even knowing how rare the 76 motor is for this car. It should be a WX code block. And this is a, uh, what the hell is it? It's a YC block. And uh, to make a long story short, that's on all my other videos, I found a correct 76 trans am only wx complete engine four miles from my house <laughs> not the numbers matching engine to this car but i got the correct 455 it's all rebuilt painted ready to go in the car done right now so this is all coming out tomorrow um subframe's gonna come out that's all getting powder coated all the suspension not gloss black but the correct finish um like like chassis black whatever it's got to be i have to double check but this is all going to be nice and done and clean which brings me i have all new suspension for the car already um from oh god i always screw this up something f bodies antennas not f body warehouse shit all right i got all new suspension for the car already and one thing about this car the interior was absolutely gorgeous um there's its headliner its original headliner just i mean mint as it gets i think it's the original one i don't know is this 
Look at that. That sure looks like original cardboard. Perfect. I gotta get that out of here before it gets all dusty. Um, the seats, insanely gorgeous. The dash pad, no cracks whatsoever. Perfect. So all that's going right back in this car. This carpet, at first I thought it could have been the original carpet because I don't know, it was, it's, it was cut so precisely perfect. Um, and it just seemed like it could have been an old original carpet. But after further inspection, I think it's a really old um, aftermarket carpet. And it's not that bad, it's just dusty and dirty. It is molded so perfectly to this floor my friend who has a carpet cleaning business, business, I'm giving him this carpet and I'm gonna say go to town on it and I wanna see what this thing is gonna look like. Super, super clean. Um, I don't know, is the older stuff, I have a feeling the older quality is better anyway than the new carpet. You know, new, new quality carpets out there, I don't know. I know nothing is like factory, but I don't know, is the older repro carpets better than the new stuff? We, who knows, but this thing fits so perfect and lays in there like a glove that it's worth me having him clean the shit out of this. And if it's beautiful, black, pristine, it's going right back in and I'm not buying a new carpet for the car. Back that, <clears throat> that being said, I'm trying to save as many original parts on this car as possible. Usually a lot of people restore cars, they put all these brand new parts on a car, or a lot of aftermarket stuff goes on. But this car, I'm gonna try to put back a lot of original shit on it. Um, you know, there's so much nice stuff on this car that's original. And you can easily go find a lot of fully restored cars out there, but finding them with original parts is another thing. You know, you can seek out NOS stuff, but I just think with this thing, I'm gonna to try to go, try to put it back with all original stuff as much as possible. Back to the term restoration. This brings up a whole nother question. So the term, the whole restoration thing, like I said, it's not a 50th anniversary car. It's not a bandit car, you know, which we're going bonkers now in price, but um, 76, 50th anniversary cars certainly have been climbing. I don't see this just sitting super low in value and I'm not doing this because of the value of the car. I'm doing this because I love it. You can have a budget on a car, but trying to fully restore a car and keeping it under the value of the car, is, it's very tough, especially with today's pricing on everything out there on what it takes to restore a damn car now. It ain't cheap. Um, so this brings me to the question, how far am I gonna go? You know, we were talking super nice repaint. And then Joe's like, well, what are we gonna do? Is this thing gonna go on a rotisserie? I'm like, I don't know. He goes, well, you gotta figure it out. You know, he's like, look at all this stuff. What are we gonna do with this? It's not easy just to sand a lot of things down See, there's rust here that has to be dealt with. There's, there's surface rust, but that has to be at least sandblasted, you know, spot sandblasted. Unless this car is getting dipped or professionally media blasted, it's a ton of work, even in, even in here, getting all this stuff, doing all that by hand with like a wire wheel, and you know, that's gonna take forever. But that's what you're gonna have to do, or I'm gonna have to do, or Joe's gonna have to do, one of us, if this car is not taken completely down, meaning every wire, every screw, all the glass is coming out regardless, but to to blast a car or dip a car, you need you just need a shell. You cannot have anything left in it. So that is the big question right now. What the hell am I gonna do? <laughs> Are we gonna do this all by hand? You know, I said, I wanna kind of, I wanted to try to get everything done by hand before. And I said, I wanna kind of cheat the bottom, Joe. I wanna clean it, we'll pressure wash it, 
because if it's all gorgeous original red primer under there, I didn't want to. I just wanted to leave it its original factory finish. Like I said, everyone, anybody can paint new primer and sealer and make them look beautiful, but having a car with its original finish, that is a whole nother thing these days. So, I don't know, it's like, this. I'm like this right now, you know? Am I gonna, are we gonna work our ass off? And, you know, so like, like this stuff, there's all this gooey seam sealer from the factory, you know, this, this stuff even inside it's all inside it's on the cowl here this factory sealer it's somewhere on here but if this car goes and gets blasted all of that shit's gone and you get a shiny steel car back with none of that anymore and you got to reapply all that stuff are we just going to clean this by hand you're not going to see this anyway and leave it you can still blow paint over it if you want but do you guys do you, do you car do you serious car guys you're gonna know what I'm saying. Of course, I'm not doing it for the money, but you don't wanna be so upside down in a car where you're like, well, I'm 50,000 over budget now compared to what the car is actually worth, but which happens every day when guys do cars. But this car is badass. In my opinion, this is one awesome Trans Am and like I said, it's not a gold package car. It doesn't get the gold striping. There's no T-tops. It does not have a gold dash bezel. No gold steering wheel. You know what I'm saying? The inner, the inside steering wheel is not gold. Does not have, does not have gold honeycombs. But it will have a gold bird. It will have gold Trans Am stickers on the fenders. And it will have a gold Trans Am decal across the back. Where, oh, here. So it does have gold on it, but from the factory, the car had silver honeycomb wheels. So I'm gonna show you a couple of pictures of what this car looks like restored, because there's some out there. So see that, silver wheels, some gold decals, and that's it. The rest is black. It's just a really cool, cool car. And I think the car definitely deserves a lot of attention. Now, <laughs> I kept seeing in the old videos, like, I'm going to make this car as original as I can. I'm all about originality. You know, I see a lot of shit, and then sometimes I completely change my mind. Um, just the past hour talking with Joe, he and I are staring at this car for the past hour and a half after we worked all day on it. We're just staring at it, you know? And he's like, well, I know you're keeping the car. You're not doing this to sell it. He goes, do some, you know, one thing I'm doing to this car, I'm putting a Dakota dash, analog dash in it, meaning the gauges. I have that in my CUDA and I love it. Everything works perfectly. I've said before in, in videos, you could send all your instruments out to these fucking guys who restore and recalibrate all your instruments and they still won't work right, okay? That Dakota, the nice one, the $1,500 one is badass. Um, one thing I have to stress is I cannot stand when a car has non-factory gauges, okay? That has always been a pet peeve of mine, especially like when in the late 80s when hot rod builders would put those silver round gauge it was like the the craze like all these modern gauges were coming out and it's just i just would look in there and go ugh you know guys would have chevelles and they put these new clusters in them that looked so horrible that is not the case with these dakota systems you glance in there nine people out of ten are going to think it's factory except a trans am guy they're gonna go, oh, look at that, that's a little different. Oh, nice, that's cool, still looks good. It still looks great, and everything's gonna be perfectly operational. So that's one thing that's not gonna be original to the car. That's hardly noticeable, okay? And they're nice and bright. The factory gauges on these are, ugh. I put LED bulbs in, it still was dim as shit on the old school shit I had in here because I restored part of the dash a while ago. So 
of course it's not the numbers matching motor but I have the correct motor it's going to have the like the ram air style aftermarket exhaust manifolds the cast iron ones that are ported nice and big they're already ceramic coated ready to go on but you know so that's not a correct detail going back on the car so that's two things that aren't factory correct so now I'm sitting here and we're talking about these valve covers Joe and I I go these are fucking cool man these old Mickey Thompson valve covers and uh, the thing is when Joe painted the new motor something fell off my toolbox and dented one of the freshly painted valve covers on the new engine and I went berserk so I'm like these are cool man too bad they're all old looking he goes actually he goes actually I know a guy in Illinois who does some crazy process to transmission cases he goes these will look absolutely pristine and brand new he goes if you bring these they do this crazy process he goes you should put them on your new motor I mean they came on the car It'd be kind of cool like a like a day two thing you know and I'm like, I don't know. I'm like, I do love them. I do love day two cars. I do love day two accessories. Those of you that know what day two means. And I'm like, they're valve covers. If someone hates them someday, there's four bolts and you can remove it and put the factory ones back on, which are dime a dozen, very easy. So I said, you know what, Joe? <laughs> Maybe I might do that. And, uh, then I'm like, I still gotta find a better set of 15 inch honeycombs to put back on this car. This is where this is where things are getting interesting. And I said, I, you know, I said this car's gonna be a little wicked. It's gonna have like a lot of torque. The motor's gonna be a torque monster according to my engine builder, you know? So it should be producing close to 500 horsepower which to me, I don't want any more in a Trans Am. I don't want to be all over the freaking road. You know, I want to have a lot of fun in a car. I don't want it not drivable. I don't want to build a race car, you know, a quarter mile car. So I'm like, you know, uh, we're talking about these wheels and tires and Joe's like, forget those honeycombs. I'm gonna tell you what you should put on this car. And I'm like, what's that, Joe? He goes, the new weld what the fuck are they i think they're the new weld stars and i'm like at first i go center lines make it like a real 80s trans am and joe goes i hate center lines i'm like i don't i don't i love them but then he goes check out these rims and we start looking at these wheels and then they make one with black centers and i'm like oh shit now i can see things Going in different directions, a little, a little tiny bit. Super factory car though. Stock appearance car. With the exception of the valve covers and maybe the wheels. So, you know, everything else will look exact factory. So that's bouncing around in my pea brain right now. So, imagine that, that'd be... You know, it'd be pretty cool. I could always have a set of honeycombs I could throw on it at any time. If I really want to do that, I could still get a nice set of honeycombs, restore them, and have a second set of wheels. So that's kind of what's bouncing around in my brain. So um, I just wanted to show you today on this video where we're at right now because next time you see this car, the drivetrain is going to be out. I'm sure the glass is going to be out. And uh, we're going to drop the subframe. It's going right to the powder coater. Um, you can see these are ready to go as well. Look at this ugly beast. Is that awesome or what? 70 Dodge Wagon with a 383. So... <clears throat> Anyway, I had to do an update on the Trans Am, and uh, 
I'm sure these are beautiful fenders too. Everything about this car is nice. This hood is mint, 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 mint. There's no, there's no rust blowing out in any freaking seams. You know, if, if you really know how to look at a car, if you're gonna buy an old car, you know the things to look for. And I don't see any of that on this car. So we are both highly impressed with the condition of this sucker. So that's it. Just a quick video today because next time you see it, it's gonna be taken down even more. And uh, so what if I make a few modifications? They're easily, they're easy ones. You could put it right back to stock if someone ends up with the car one day. But tell me in the comments your thoughts. You're gonna tell me anyway. <laughs> I don't care if you yell at me. But tell me your thoughts on uh, the car. I don't care anything. Condition of the car. Um, do you have a 76? Should I? Take it all the way. Should I take it and blast it and dip it? I want to drive this car. Keep that in mind. I don't want another, like my Cuda, I gotta, my, my Cuda is unbelievable ground up build. The bottom looks just as good as the top of the car. I want to drive the shit out of this car. So it's, it's like, how far do you go? I gotta look at the costs of what it takes to go take the body now and have it done and uh, just kind of start figuring it out I guess you know otherwise I may have to come up with that same money and labor if I don't do this Joe's gonna be doing it I gotta pay him so either way you pay all right thanks for watching everybody and uh, we will see you soon with more videos look out Joe <laughs>